Whew. It's been a little bit under the weather. Maybe I've uh, maybe I've got a virus. So what exactly is a virus? And yes, you can bet this one is sure to go viral. All right, so have you ever had the flu? Um, the flu is actually one of a host of illnesses caused by a virus. And yes, that's a little bit of a pun there, um, that, a, that a virus has to have a host to live. Um, and in this case, the host is going to be a living cell. So a quick review about, um, about cell theory and what a cell is. Um, the cell is the smallest living unit in living organisms. Uh, all living things are made of cells, and all cells come from other pre-existing cells, otherwise known as mitosis. All right, so what exactly can a virus infect? Just about anything that's alive. So it can do plants, animals, um, insects, and even bacteria. So a virus is not a cell, and technically it's not a living thing. Um, it, it lacks many of the characteristics of life. Um, it's not a bacteria or fungi. Um, it's not a prokaryote, which means it's not bacteria. Um, it's not a eukaryote, which means it's not human. It's not plant, um, not a human cell, or plant cell, etc. Uh, it is considered to be one of the most abundant biologic entities on the planet, meaning that there's more uh, types of viruses than there are anything else that's alive on uh, that, that's around on our on our planet. Um, not all viruses are harmful. Some can protect us from. Uh, harmful bacteria such as E. coli, and others can be used to inject helpful and specific DNA fragments into cells. This is known as gene therapy, and um, gene therapy is a phenomenal topic to study. So if you are ever looking for something that is amazing, um, spend some time learning more about gene therapy. Absolutely incredible. All right, so let's talk virus size. Viruses are very, very small. Um, now, things that are really small you measure in, in micrometers. Um, otherwise known as a micron, and, and this is the symbol for the micron. So for reference, um, dust mite poop is about five micrometers, which is about the width of a single strand of spider web. So it takes one million microns to equal one meter, you know, if you stack them uh, end over end. So uh, a typical eukaryotic cell, again for reference, is about seven micrometers in diameter. All right, so um, more about virus size. So what's smaller than a micrometer? Um, What's smaller than a micrometer is a nanometer, uh, and the symbol is Nm. So one micron equals 1,000 nanometers. Uh, for reference, the coronavirus is approximately 120 nanometers. Now, let's spend a little bit of time on this graphic here. Hopefully that'll sort of help uh, explain kind of sort of some of the size differences uh, that we've got going on. So if, you, if we're gonna go on the very, very far, far left here, um, this is the pore size uh, of a reverse osmosis membrane, which is 0 0.0001. Um, uh, nanometers, or excuse me, micrometers. And so uh, reverse osmosis is like, it's basically like, it's a filter that um, filters out generally, generally water. And so it's traps anything that will not fit through that tiny, teeny, tiny little membrane. So next up, we've got, um, this is the pore size of a nanofilter membrane. Uh, from there, you've got the, the uh, approximate size of the coronavirus. From there, you've got um, a back, uh, rough, the average bacterial size. From there, you've got the pore size of a carbon water filter. Um, and again, these are like, if they look like balls, you know, sort of like, but imagine that um, those are like the pores that things will fit through. So moving to the right for, further, we've got a red blood cell. And if you look at the red blood cell, it is huge compared to the coronavirus. Um, viruses are really small, and when they're really small, they can sort of fit through a lot of, a lot of things. Um, then you've got Last but not least, you've got the average pore size of a sediment water filter. So hopefully that helped with the relative size. Viruses are teeny, teeny, tiny little things. All right, so virus structure. Um, they come in many, many shapes. Uh, all viruses, but all viruses have genetic material. And that genetic material is either going to be DNA or it's going to be RNA. Most have a capsid, and the capsid is a protein coat that project, protects the genetic material inside. Um, and then also, some are going to have specific enzymes, which are going to bond to specific parts of, this, of the uh, cell. We're going to learn about that a little bit later. Um, or they'll have a phospholipid, a phospholipid envelope. Um, these are all useful for virus replication. And so an interesting little side note is one of the reasons that you wash your hands is that the soap, the chemistry in the soap is actually going to bond and break down fat. And so... Uh, specifically a phospholipid, uh, lipid being fat. So the soap is actually going to break down the outer shell of the virus. And that's, how, that's why 
you know, that's why you always wash your hands is because that soap is actually only going to break down and destroy that virus. So um, there you have it. So again, as we said, uh, next up, more, vi more on viral replication. And uh, speaking of viral, viral replication, I think, I don't know, I'm still feeling a little, a little, a little peaked. So I think uh, maybe try a little bit of orange juice, maybe some chicken soup. So we'll see you next time.